today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami, part two. Finishing up last week. In fact, I'll begin today by summing up some of the territory I covered last week and then we'll continue. Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami history, a spiritual successor of Sant Tulsi Sahib, and another guru that Swamiji Maharaj associated with. On last week's program, I mentioned that I authored a paper on the subject, published by David Christopher Lane, Professor Lane's Journal of Radhaswami Studies of the MSAC Philosophy Group, and that now this is in ebook form at archive.org, the academia site, and some other blog and article writer type sites online. I mentioned that I have been in touch with followers of Sant Tulsi Sahib and Sant Gudhari Sahib, the Lucknow Ashram, the Gudhari Sahib Ashram in Lucknow. And they have described the lineage of this group. In fact, I'm scrolling down my article here to the section where I have some guru lineage information, a chart containing the various lineages. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, lineages, guru lineages. We have a direct lineage from Sant Tulsi Sahib to Sri Gudhari to his immediate successor in Lucknow who was Sri Dahal Sahib after him was Sri Siva Sahib and at present as of the time of this recording the living guru at the Gudhari Sahib ashram in Lucknow is Sri Hari Charan Sahib in another parallel lineage, we have the gurus of the Sant Tulsi Sahib Mandir in Hathras. The lineage there is Sant Tulsi Sahib to Sri Surswami to Sri Darshan Das of Hathras, Sri Mathura Das to Sri Prakash Das that David Lane and Professor Mark Jurgensmeyer write about in their publications, their visit back in the late 70s with Sri Prakash Das. From there, it was Sri Dayal Das, also known as Mahantji, who attended the SpearCon 2010 conclave, and then he passed on, and so the successor, the current living teacher there, as of the time of this recording, is Sri... Misra Das. And then there's another parallel lineage to Baba Devi Sahib of Hathras to Maharishi Mehi Paramhans and his various successors in the Maharishi Mehi lineage that go back to Tulsi Sahib as well. There was also another successor of Tulsi Sahib by the name of Ram Krishna, not to be confused with other Ram Krishnas, and I'm not sure if he had any successors. I have no information about any successors of Ram Krishna in the Hathras Tulsi Sahib Sangit or Satsang community. From Sri Gudhari Sahib, we have Swamiji Maharaj. I mentioned last week that there's a lot of evidence of an association between Swamiji Maharaj of Agra and Gudhari Sahib, that in fact, Gudhari was the guru that Swamiji associated with after the death of Tulsi Sahib in 1843. And upon the passing of Gudhari Sahib, do we get, after that time, a few, a uh, couple months later, do we get the emergence of the public Agra satsang that became known as the Radha Swami satsang? There are references I mentioned last week in the early Radha Swami Agra writings, such as the biography of Swamiji Maharaj, to Gudhari being the guru of Swamiji Maharaj, that Swamiji treated him with great respect, supported him, materially, financially, and that, in fact, 
in Swamiji's other home in Lucknow, that was home base. That's where Gudhari lived. That's the headquarters of the Lucknow satsang during the early days. And so I mentioned uh, that. I also mentioned that there are a number of Indian scholars that discuss Gudhari Sahib, that this is not a theory of mine, that Gudhari Sahib is a guru that should be acknowledged as being part of Swamiji's life, that this is not my theory that I invented, but in fact, a number of scholars, several different Indian scholars that I refer to in my article, as well as uh, David Christopher Lane, in his book on the Radha Swami tradition and other publications, uh, also the book Radha Swami Reality by Professor Mark Jurgen Smyer, uh, writings of Daniel Gold and others have also talked about Gudhari Sahib as being this mysterious figure that seems to have been another guru. And I mentioned last week that I found a document pertaining to the life of Baba Devi Sahib, that other devotee of Tulsi Sahib, and that Baba Devi Sahib was invited to go to Agra. I shared with you last week an account where Baba Devi was introduced to Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram, and Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram mentioned this relationship between his guru, Swamiji Maharaj, and Sant Gudhari Sahib. So from all different directions, we find references to Sant Gudhari Sahib, also referred to as Maharaj Gudhari Sahib. And so basically how I view this information is that Gudhari Sahib should be factored into the history Instead of hidden or lost or misplaced, he should be acknowledged as a guru between Tulsi Sahib and Swami G. Maharaj. That the nature of the relationship is very similar to Darshan Singh, his relationship to his initiating guru, Sawan Singh, and the guru he associated with, Sant Kripal Singh. That, uh, that Darshan Singh was very much like Swami G., initiated by an earlier guru, in his case, Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, and after the passing of Sawan Singh in 1948, Darshan Singh associated with Kripal Singh, and his role of being a guru began after the death of Kripal Singh in 1974. So that same sort of relationship when people write the history describing Darshan Singh, they mention both Kripal Singh, the guru he associated with and succeeded, and the earlier guru that initiated Darshan Singh, uh, Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. So, Gudhari Sahib should also be mentioned in the history, should also be included as the guru that Swamiji associated with after the passing of his initiating guru, Tulsi Sahib, back in 1843. And throughout his life, uh, he was uh, supported, followed by Swamiji. And Swamiji uh, let him live in his other home in Lucknow. Now, Swamiji's family was fairly well off. They were bang into banking, part of the banking industry. And that's why Swamiji owns these homes and uh, his uh, very nice house in Panigali, Agra. Uh, Swamiji's house in Agra was a kind of satsang headquarters with satsangs and sadhus even living there and was a kind of headquarters of spirituality. And the same was also true of his other home in Lucknow. It served as a home base for the satsang there. Gudhari Sahib lived in that house. It was before the ashram was built there. The home of Swamiji in Lucknow was headquarters to the Sant Mat satsang located in Lucknow. So basically with the paper that I published, I'm arguing that Gudhari Sahib should be acknowledged there as that guru in between Swamiji and Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. And then near the end of last week's program, I shared a little bit about this fascinating account in the Sarbachan where Swamiji was describing his mystical experiences. He was trying to ascend through a region known as Mahasun, the Great Void. 
and really couldn't get to the bottom of it, was uh, traveling around this region, couldn't find the depth of this region, and he referred to receiving guidance from multiple sources, uh, teachers and guides, and following the track pointed by the sages, plural. And I mentioned that there is a commentary on that section of the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry where Swamiji is describing this experience of trying to get to the bottom of Mahasun. Uh, and uh, this other disciple of Swamiji Maharaj by the name of Sant Garabdas, another successor of Swamiji, another disciple and spiritual successor of Swamiji Maharaj, along with Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram and Baba Jamal Singh. Uh, uh, Garabdas actually mentions the names of those those uh, guides that Swamiji was referring to in his Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. That in fact he was referring to Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras as well as he was referring to Maharaj Gudhari Sahib. And in my article I actually have a, a photograph of the page of Garbdas's book Anmal Vajan, where he is commenting on Swamiji's Sarbachan poetry and naming his gurus as being Tulsi Sahib and Maharaj Gudhari Sahib. I actually have the page in Gujarati and had it translated um, by various translators into English. Swamiji in his discourses has said that his surat descended into the dark regions of Mahasun, one of the inner spiritual heavenly regions, but could neither locate the bottom or the end of it, nor did it feel it worthwhile to go down any further. Thereafter his surat or soul adhering to the signs as revealed to him by his gurus, plural, gurus with an S ending, ascended upwards. Here Swamiji says it was the inner mercy of his Satguru Tulsi Sahib and that of Maharaj Gudhari Das Ji whose satsang he attended for a very long period of time." Unquote. So here once again, from another independent source, not related to the other sources, from another satsang community, another independent lineage of Santmat and Radhaswami, we find a history that preserves a reference to Gudhari Das as being a very important guru and spiritual guide in the life of Swamiji Maharaj. You know, you have multiple Santmat lineages, groups, Santmat and Radhaswami groups, all saying the same thing. So after a while, I start to take it seriously, you know, and see it as a pretty strong case when you have multiple sources of information, all, all naming uh, Maharaj Gudhari Das as another guru in the life of Swamiji Maharaj. Both Sant Tulsi Sahib and Maharaj uh, Gudhari Sahib were gurus of Swamiji Maharaj. Both provided Swamiji with inner grace, helping to guide him during his inward journey, as described in the passage in the Sarbachan poetry. He was a disciple of them both, on good terms with them both, right up till the end of their lives by all accounts. I now have three different translations of this key definitive paragraph from Garab Das. I wanted to make sure the word gurus, plural, is really there in the original language, and I'm basing this on a solid translation. Actually, the paragraph above from Garab Das plus the two translations into English of the Sarbachan verses of Swamiji I have in my article uh, come from Agra sources that do not have a personal view of history and theology suggesting to them anything about Swamiji having one, much less two, gurus. In Agra Radhaswami, they do not emphasize Swamiji's past life and history, his association with Tulsi Sahib and Gudhari, to any great extent. 
it's kind of uh, a situation where Swamiji is presented as the founding guru of this new Radha Swami satsang, and the history that happened before uh, is not really emphasized to any great degree. And yet, to their credit, that's how all three chose to translate those passages referring to gurus of Swamiji, plural. Anmal Vajan or Anmal Bhajan is a book of questions and answers by Sant Garbdas, a close disciple of Swamiji Maharaj and eventual founder of the Radhaswami spiritual science, Radhaswami Satsang in Delhi, another branch of the Radhaswami faith. This old book, passed on from one generation to the next, has traveled quite far to reach me. Just to know about the existence of this book, this book called Anmal Vajan, locate someone with a copy, see some pages from it, and then getting someone to translate you know, those passages into English from Gujarati into English and Hindi into English is no easy task. Uh, from some satsangis I heard about the existence of this passage in this book, Anmal Vajan, or Anmal Bhajan, by Sant Garabdas, another successor of Swamiji that this passage existed, it mentions Swamiji having two gurus in his life that uh, he consulted, especially with this incident in his meditation, uh, trying to get through a realm, an inner mystical realm known as Mahasun, and that uh, this commentary on the Sarbachan poetry by Garabdas mentions these two gurus by name, and so I heard about that. I roughly knew, you know, what the reference was like. And so one day at a Facebook page that I've operated for a number of years, it's the most visible Sant Mott Facebook page on the Internet, I posted something saying, does anyone have, anyone here reading this, have a copy of the book Anmol Vajan by Garbdas? If so, please contact me. And as luck would have it, I mean, what are the odds? You know, pretty slim odds, actually. But someone said, yes, I have a copy in Gujarati of that book. It was handed down, you know, it was something my family had, and now I have a copy of it. And this individual knew the book really well and knew the reference to Swamiji's two gurus. And he made his own rough translation of it and sent it to me in, in an email along with a photograph of the page, which is always very nice. It's a very scholarly thing when you have a photograph of the original language. That's how some of the great uh, books are set up. You know, like, for instance, the Nag Hammadi Library, the Gospel of Thomas, for instance, you'll have in the very scholarly books, you'll have on the left-hand pages the Coptic original, and then on the right side pages, you'll have the English translation. So it's fantastic when you can have the original language there, too. So scholars, anyone who is able to read, can read it directly without, you know, relying on me uh, to verify uh, what it says. That's just awesome. That's very scholarly, very academically sound practice, if that can be done. And so, uh, from there, after being in possession of the Gujarati translation, as well as that individual's rough translation, I went to some other people and had them translate that paragraph. See, it's great. You don't have to know the whole book. You don't have to have a copy of the entire book on Malvajan. You just need to know what to look for, and someone happened to know the paragraph in that book that has this information and then from there you know made a translation and and has a photograph of it which i include in my article my paper and then from there you can have other people translate you know from gujarati into english and from uh, gujarati into hindi and then from hindi into english and get other people's uh, translations to really you know make sure that it's correctly being translated pretty awesome and thus, 
another verification of, about Swamiji having another guru or associating with a guru uh, in his life by the name of Sant Gudhari Sahib, a kind of unknown figure, not talked about, not listed in the books uh, very much, not really included on the list of gurus in the tradition of Sant Mat. Uh, after the break, I want to talk about Garab Das, this other disciple of Swamiji Maharaj, and talk more about the Sarbachan poetry of Swamiji, give some background about Garab Das, where he fits into the picture, and provide my summary of this paper on the subject of Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami history. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after this break. Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, part two of Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami history. The following is from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry, the M. G. Gupta translation, from a section known as the Esoteric Instructions, a kind of book within a book. It's a very important lengthy section of the Sarbachan poetry that goes into detail about soul travel or heavenly ascents. I did a series of programs based upon it a while back called The Ascension of the Soul, Parts 1 through 5. This is the section of the Sarbachan poetry where Swamiji maps out the inner regions, the kingdom of the heavens, the various levels or realms. It represents the heart of this essential holy book of the Radhaswami faith. And it also speaks to the authenticity of Swamiji Maharaj, who really did spend a great deal of time exploring inner space. And this book represents his explorations. This is from the section in question about Swamiji and his encounter with the realm of the Great Void or Mahasun. Beyond this, there are innumerable palaces made of crystal and diverse spirits inhabit them and are settled there in accordance with the allotments made by the Lord. And they see the peculiar mutual display which is so blissful, and in turn they also establish their own plays and sports. In Hindi, these spirits are described as circles of hamsas, or purified spirits. The engravings and the designs carved in these spheres are to be seen in order to be believed. The entire dispensation and workshop there is purely spiritual. It is not at all gross or material. Spirits dwelling there are characterized by excessive delicacy, subtlety, refineness, and purity. They don't have a trace of physical coarseness and impurity. The details of this sphere are known only to fakirs. Full particulars of these regions are known only to sans. It's rendered by the S.D. Maheshwari translation of the same passage in his edition of the Sarbachan poetry. To unfold more about it is not proper and advisable. For a long time, the spirit of this fakir, Swamiji Maharaj himself, lingered and stayed there, and then there, under the instruction from the teachers and guides, moved ahead. Moving on and on, the spirit soared up about five Arab, or five billion and seventy-five crores. One crore equals ten million Jojans, really an incalculable height, and broke into the realm of Hahut, or Mahasun, the great void, and lingered around it. How shall I describe it? For ten billion miles, again an incalculable distance, there is utter darkness. How shall I describe its depth, except to say that for one karab, or one karab equals one billion, i.e. an incalculable extent, Jojans, the soul descended, and yet 
Its bottom could not be discovered. Then again it reversed and turned upward, and following the track pointed by the sages, the spirit treaded the path, and then it was deemed improper to determine and find out the depth of this dark region. Then the surat soul moved on, unquote. Reading from the M.G. Gupta translation of Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry about Swamiji trying to get to the bottom, quite literally, of the great void, this dark region known as Mahasun, and was guided through it by sages, plural, also referred to as teachers and guides, plural. Take note of this particular sentence above by Swamiji. For a long time, the spirit of this fakir, i.e. Swamiji Maharaj himself, lingered and stayed there, and then under the instructions from the teachers and guides moved ahead. In the Sarbachan, words like Murshida and Guru are translated as master, guide, or teacher. But here we have teachers, guides, in other words, a plural form of Murshida, Murshid, Guru, not just one teacher not just one guide. Having sojourned there and having enjoyed the glory thereof for a very long time, the spirit of this fakir moved on in accordance with the instructions of the guides. In a plural form is how it's also rendered according to another translation by S.D. Maheshwari of the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. Sant Garb Das, another close disciple part of the inner circle of Swamiji Maharaj in the book of Anmol Vajan, sometimes spelled Vajan. Sant Garbdas commented on the above verses of Swamiji Maharaj's Sarbachan poetry and provides us with more evidence about Gudhari Sahib from another source. Swamiji in his discourses has said that his surat soul descended into the dark regions of Mahasun, the great void but could neither locate the bottom or the end of it, nor did he feel it worthwhile to go down any further. Thereafter his surat soul, adhering to the signs as revealed to him by his gurus, ascended upwards. Here Swamiji says it was the inner mercy of his Satguru, Tulsi Sahib, and that of Maharaj Gudhari Das Ji, whose satsang he attended for a very long period of time." Unquote. Both Sant Tulsi Sahib and Maharaj Gudhari Sahib were gurus of Swamiji Maharaj. Both provided Swamiji with inner grace helping to guide him during his inner journey, as described in the passages above. He was a disciple of them both, on good terms with them both right up till the end of their lives, by all accounts. I now have several different translations of this key definitive paragraph from Garabdas. I wanted to make sure the word gurus, plural, is really in the original, and it is a solid translation. Actually, the paragraph above from Garabdas, plus two translations into English of the Sarbachan verses of Swamiji, all come from sources in Agra. Anmol Vajan is a book of questions and answers by Sant Garabdas, a close disciple of Swamiji Maharaj, and eventually the founder of the Radhaswami spiritual science based in Delhi. This old out-of-print book passed on from one generation to the next, and traveled quite far to reach me. I posted at Facebook one day, uh, asking if someone had a copy of it, and they did, someone did, and provided me with a translation of it and a photograph of the page in question, which I have included in my paper on Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami. After the break, we'll delve into more information on the background. Who was Sant Garabdas, this other disciple and spiritual successor of Swamiji Maharaj? Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio, coming up. Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami history, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. 
at the top Facebook Santmat group, which I happen to be the administrator of one day, I posted a question asking if there was anyone out there that happened to have a copy of the book Anmol Vajan by Sant Garbdas, the famous disciple and one of the spiritual successors of Swamiji Maharaj, and beating all odds, much to my surprise, someone did. I already knew from other satsangis that this account existed, that there was this reference to Gudhari and this journey through Mahasun, that this was in that book. And so all I needed was someone who had a copy of the book and was familiar with it. And this person said that it was a book in their family that had been handed down for a generation or two, some book that was greatly influential upon him and his life, his spiritual journey, and he was very much acquainted with it and knew exactly what page to go to to find the story that I was asking about. He photographed that page and made his own rough translation and emailed it to me. You'll see a photo of that page in the article, my paper on Sant Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami. From there, I was able to get others to make translations from the Gujarati language as well as Hindi into English to come up with various translations to make sure I had a very good quality understanding of the reference to plural gurus, as in more than one guru in the life of Swamiji Maharaj. A bit of background about Sant Gaurabdas, that other successor and spiritual disciple, a great Gurumukh disciple of Swamiji Maharaj. This is a rough translation from the book Anmol Vajan. His birth date was 1846, according to our Western calendar. At the age of nine, Garbdas left home and was accompanied by a Siddha Yogeshwari for seven years. He spent time in a cave in Kashmir. He practiced the inward journey and reached the region of Trikuti, Daswandwar. After that, eventually, he came to Swami Shiv Dayal Singh, Swamiji Maharaj, in other words, took initiation from him and attained to the region of Satlok and eventually Anami Lok in his meditations. As a result of following his spiritual master, adopting Swamiji Maharaj as his spiritual master. Garbdas also apparently spent some time, perhaps prior to the time he met Swamiji, in Hathras as well as Delhi. He was acquainted with Sant Tulsi Sahib and Gudhari was acquainted with the Sant Mat Satsang there in Hathras as well as with the life and teachings of Swamiji Maharaj making him a very valuable eyewitness person back there. Sant Garbdas eventually became a spiritual teacher did satsang discourses and spread the teachings of Sant Mat around for about 38 years. He became a successor of Swamiji and initiated around 5,000 souls. Then he left the body in the year 1918. Garbdas spent some time in Hathras, which makes sense. He would be less susceptible to denying or spinning or minimalizing the connection between Sant Tulsi Sahib Maharaj Gudhari Das and Swamiji, given his association with Swamiji and apparent knowledge of the Hathras Tulsi Sahib community. More about Sant Garbdas, this is from the book Baba Jamal Singh, Spiritual Letters. Garbdas, G or Garbdas, a disciple of Swamiji who reached Sach Khand, or the ultimate spiritual realm, during his lifetime. He was from the Punjab and a brother disciple of Babaji. Though a saint of the Punjab, he preached Sant Mat in Delhi, where he had followers. Huzur Maharaj Sawan Singh had a high regard for him. Unquote. And here's another quote, another paragraph also from Jamal Singh's Spiritual Letters. 
Although the disciples of Swamiji Maharaj reached to thousands in number, yet three of them were most prominent. They were Rai Bahadur Salagram at Agra, Baba Garabdas of Delhi, and Maharaj Baba Jamal Singh Ji in the Punjab, another entry that also includes Garabdas as a great disciple, Gurmukh disciple and spiritual successor of Swamiji Maharaj who reached Sach Khand. And this is according to another branch of the Radhaswami faith, the Radhaswami Satsang Bayas, you know, founded by Baba Jamal Singh. As an independent witness representing another distinct branch of Radhaswami and a prominent disciple of Shiv Dayal Singh or Swamiji, Garb Das of the Radhaswami Satsang Delhi is a priceless resource for helping to clarify many issues about early Radhaswami history. Hopefully the whole book on Mol Vajan can be translated and published in English. I suspect if it is, it will help promote reconciliation and harmony and understanding between the different branches of the Radhaswami faith. Between those who follow the five name or Panchnam Simran mantra and those who follow Radhaswami Nam, the Simran of the name Radhaswami. The Garbdas group is following a kind of middle path between those other two branches of Radhaswami. Agra with Radhaswami Nam on the one hand and uh, Baya Sawan Kirpal, you know, with the five names or Panch Nam. So Garbdas is a very valuable saint of Sant Mat history. And I wish more of his writings were available in the English language. Look what we've done with one paragraph from Garbdas. What if we could get the whole book translated into English one day? My name is James Bean. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. More after the break will sum up this whole research and put everything into context. The origins of recent Sant Mat history from the time of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras up to the living present. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio coming up. Two of two, part two of Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radhaswami history, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Summary, conclusion. Once upon a time, there was one Sant Mat community, founded by Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, India. It had branches in Hathras, Agra, Lucknow, and several other cities. Swamiji Maharaj and his wife Radhaji were part of it, as were their families and extended families. Here's the past history, the context of this Agra satsang that Swamiji grew up in and came to eventually lead. This is from a white paper on the religion of science and Radhaswami faith published by Dayal Bagh in Agra. Quote, Gradually, Tulsi Sahib attracted a large number of followers and disciples from among the high-caste Brahmins as well as the low-caste Sudras. They came from the poor classes as also from the affluent. He used to visit towns and cities in Uttar Pradesh, and among his disciples were Swamiji's father, his wife, his mother, his mother-in-law, and sister. They were all keen disciples of Tulsi Sahib. He used to pay Tulsi Sahib used to pay visits to them in Agra, stay in their home in Panigali and hold satsangs there. Unquote. Maharaj Gudhari Sahib was also a part of the Agra satsang, spending some time there, according to Pratap Singh Seth in the biography of Swamiji Maharaj, page 37. I do agree with those accounts that describe Swamiji as being initiated at a very young age by Sant Tulsi Sahib, and no doubt Swamiji did regard Tulsi Sahib as his primary initiating guru that he grew up with, as evidenced by all of the guru bhakti, all of the devotional contents of Swamiji's Sarbachan poetry. While there is no evidence that 
Sant Tulsi Sahib appointed Swamiji to immediately assume the Gadi, immediately assume the role of Guru in Hathras back in 1843 at the time of Tulsi Sahib's passing, and there's no record of that actually occurring, Swamiji certainly was held in high regard and did begin to prepare for his own eventual spiritual mission. According to the sources that we have, Swamiji spent between 15 and 17 years leading a contemplative lifestyle, devoting much time to meditation in a special room within a room in his home at Panigali in Agra. Swamiji never cut himself off from the Tulsi Sahib community he had been part of all of his life. During that same period of time, between the death of Sant Tulsi Sahib in 1843 and the beginning of the Radha Swami Satsang in 1861, Swamiji not only devoted time to meditation but also remained affiliated with the Tulsi Sahib community, according to several different independent Sant Mat and Radha Swami sources, some of which I've mentioned here today and last week and have certainly documented in my paper on this subject associating with Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, venerating him as a sant, attending his satsang, receiving instruction and guidance or updesh from him, doing seva or service, initiating a few people in Agra as far back as the mid-1850s, beginning uh, his own mission, being quite involved in both Agra and Lucknow satsangs. An older guru grooming a younger one, granting him permission to initiate and helping him to become an established successor, presiding over his own satsang or ashram, even before the death of the elder guru, is actually quite common and in harmony with Sant Mat principles. I know of several examples of this in Sant Mat history. I even know of contemporary living masters alive right now that began their spiritual mission many years before the death of the gurus that appointed and mentored them. What we find if we examine the life of Swamiji Maharaj and his transition to becoming guru is that it was quite normal and routine the way it was often done, especially in the community founded by Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. In other words, Swamiji was assuming a greater and greater role, was initiating people in the mid-1850s, even though Gudhari was still alive and didn't pass on until 1860. The references to Swamiji having two gurus, venerating Gudhari, v valuing his teachings or updesh, being guided in higher planes, regions known only to sants, quote, unquote, such as Mahasun, the great void, the radiant form of a master in Mahasun, that's the sign of a fairly advanced being. Being part of his satsang for all those years, donating, supporting, doing siva for his cause, treating him as guru, only beginning his own public mission right after the death of Gudhari Sahib, in my view, strongly indicates that Swamiji could only have seen him as a sant, a.k.a. a master or competent, worthy successor of Tulsi Sahib. After that successor passed on is when Swamiji Maharaj officially began his own public, full-time, out-in-the-open mission in the city of Agra. For this reason, I believe an honest response to the evidence by those committed to truthfulness and accuracy of Sant Mat history should be a willingness to recognize Maharaj Gudhari Sahib as the guru occupying that time period, occupying that space between Sant Telsi Sahib and Swamiji Maharaj. He should no longer be the unknown or omitted guru. We should acknowledge that he was guru in that space between Tulsi Sahib and Swamiji Maharaj. Rumi's Ode to the Unknown Murshids, Sages and Guides In every age God's mercy and pleasure graces their sant's pure spirit and breath. Their names, the names of locks or innumerable, cloistered, secluded, hidden, majestic, spiritual, personages or saints whose heads are adorned and distinguished by his grace have remained unknown and unsung because they were the synosier of God who must have felt envious of their spiritual grandeur and chose to keep them obscure and unhonored 
as obscure heroes are often unsung. A verse of poetry from the Mathnawe, or great work of Jaaladeen Rumi, Volume 2, translated by M. G. Gupta, published by Huma Books of Agra, also the source of a translation of the Sarbachan Radhaswami prose and poetry. My name is James Bean. Thanks for joining me today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. If you'd like to receive a link to my article on Gudhari Sahib, if you'd like to receive photos of Swamiji's house at Panagali in Agra, a place of much Santmat history for many decades, send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com james at spiritualawakeningradio.com or you can text me at this number 508-603-9381 visit my website spiritualawakeningradio.com there's a donate button at the website there's also links to blogs podcasts available on demand social media where daily spiritual quotes appear at Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, etc. SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com And tune in again next week at the same time for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Mm-hmm.